Oh, that's cool. Hello, ladies and gents. Welcome to the channel. My name is Chris, and this aircraft probably doesn't need much of an introduction. This is the Cessna C337 Skymaster II by Carinati. This is, of course, Microsoft Flight Simulator, and the airfield we're at is Echo Golf Tango Bravo High Wycombe Air Park. I'm going to take this on a flight from here up to Echo Golf Tango Kilo, which is Oxford, aka Kidlington Airport, and the flight's not going to be very long at all, about 10 minutes. This is a kind of first look, kind of review, kind of uh, introduction to this aeroplane, so it's useful to you if you're thinking about buying it, um, especially if you've been single engine general aviation type aircraft until now and you want something that is twin engined because of course it is the famous push-pull uh, system going on here. Also useful to you if you're a Carinado fan. I know there's a lot of haters out there but I'm a massive fan of it and even if you are a bit dubious about Carinado I definitely recommend considering it because it's so unique. I mean what a lovely little aircraft. So let's dive straight in. I mean we've had enough look from the outside. Needless to say it looks fan. Fantastic. Here we go in the cockpit. Uh, I have already set up everything I want in terms of the um, static elements outside. First thing you want to see is the iPad, which is tucked away down on the floor to the right hand side. And this is where you'll manage the cold and dark options, the static elements on the outside. So we'll switch that off, external power off, tow bar off. Uh, the pilot we can switch on for later. We'll shut the baggage door and we can actually shut this door by clicking on the handle. There we go, that makes it a bit quieter. You can see in this aircraft, it's a nice four-seater. Uh, the textures on the leather look amazing, and the cockpit itself is just a really nice place to be. And whilst I remember your notes, um, perhaps there's a bit of a green hue to the uh, the whole thing, and that's because of the tint of the uh, of the windscreen. They've actually tinted it green. If you look through this little window here, you'll see it's nice and clear versus the green hue. Uh, also talking sunshades, we've got this up here, a little sunshade, some blind that you can pull down and move forward should you wish. There we go, that's out of the way. Other things you can see on the iPad will be a GTN 750 integration, so you can switch it off and have your basic Garmin uh, screen, or if you've got the GTN 750 from uh, PMS50.com, then you get that option too, which is really nice, so I've got that installed. Startup options, it gives you the states here and it gives you basic checklists. Now the aircraft itself, when you install it, uh, if you dive into the installation folder, you can find uh, the checklist. Uh, you'll also be able to find a reference page for the uh, speed. So you'll have emergency and normal procedures and reference speeds to work from, but there is no how to fly it. Um, but if you think basic general aviation aircraft, you're not far wrong. Uh, so that's a checklist, not that I'm gonna be following it today. And I'll caveat with, I'm not experienced in this aircraft. I'll be following basic checks and uh, if you see anything that I could be doing better or you're an experienced aviator in this aircraft type, please do comment below uh, so we can all learn from it. So that is it. That is the iPad. We'll tuck that away and we'll start the aircraft up and get, uh, get on route. Now I'll flash up a graphic of the route that we're going to take, but it's a northwest, northwesterly route, about 25 miles, but it's not going to take us very long. A quick cockpit for mill. We'll do that once we're airborne, uh, but I'll get this started as quick as I can. Uh, fuel selectors are up here. Uh, we want to put the battery on, alternators on. There we go. Uh, so that is all on. I'm going to switch the avionics master on here because I keep forgetting to do it and it can initialize whilst we're busy. Uh, we can prime it with the pumps. We've got pumps, uh, correction, the fuel tank selected appropriately. Rear, right, front, left. I've already said that, I think. Uh, and we've got the high pumps on. We'll put the mixture to rich. And then the throttle should go to high and you should see a fuel flow indicate, but it doesn't. So we'll just assume that that has primed. We'll switch off those pumps. We'll switch on a beacon to let everyone know we're about to start. And then it's a case of starting the engine. So we'll crack the throttles at about a quarter inch and we'll start the front first. Nice, that's the front engine started. A bit of green smoke for some reason, but there we go. Okay, so the engines are all on. Put the nav lights on, the strobes can stay off for now. Taxi light can go on. We'll bring the yoke back. Uh, we'll probably switch the P2 on whilst we're here. 
we'll leave the face switch off. Got the map on there. I think that's pretty much all we need. I'll set the flaps to uh, first stage, which is one third, and we'll taxi off out to the runway two four. I'm clear for takeoff. I'll switch all the lights on. Uh, yes, like I say, this is the take three, so I've got a little bit of experience in the nuances of the airplane, which I'll talk through as I go. Uh, first heading after takeoff is going to be 292, so I'll set that up once we're off. I can switch the weather radar on at this stage. Lights are all on. We can squawk. Uh, so we should be squawking now. And I think, again, we are good to go. Wow, that's pretty loud. So I really like the animation of the uh, gear as it comes up. That's really nice how it folds together. I'm going to cruise up to 3,000 feet, heading 292, and we'll be on our way. We're aiming for a point just south and west of Oxford initially, and I will join you at top of climb in the cruise. Okay, here we are, top of climb, view from outside. We are on autopilot, and just to confirm, the thing looks brilliant. Inside the cockpit, you can see the autopilot set up. So a couple of nuances I've found so far. Uh, I can't click the autopilot key. So I've got that assigned to a key bind on my HOTAS for the autopilot on and off. And that works fine. So be aware of that for now. The other thing is the altitude hold will hold the altitude that you selected the altitude at. So if you press this button at uh, 2000 feet and you level at three, when you click autopilot, it'll send you back down, which uh, as long as you're aware of that, it's not a problem. The weather radar does uh, switch on. It does function, but I haven't tested it versus any real world weather yet. See the uh, GTN 750 integration is looking sweet. Okay, out the front. I'll raise the seat a little bit. You can see uh, Charlgrove airfield here and off to the left is, uh, where is it? RF Benson. We can open the window in flight. And you can hear that really great noise of the buzzy engine uh, on the outside. I quite enjoy that, it's a nice feature. Uh, CBs in here, are, uh, they're here, but they're not model, they're not functional. Same deal with the alternate gear extension handle, that isn't functional either. But aside from that, most of the other things are clickable. Um, so it's not study level, but it's kind of standard Carinado. And if that's what you're after, this is probably a good plane for you. Okay, so let's have a little cockpit familiarization. So if you've bought this aircraft, let's show you around. So I've already mentioned what's on the roof being the fuel uh, tank selectors. Uh, from right to left, we've got the transponder down the lower right. We've got the, uh, I believe it's ADF. Uh, next to us, next to that, we've got all the engine temperatures and pressures. We've got the uh, RPM manifold pressure and fuel flow, uh, obviously doubled up because there's two engines, altimeter over to the right and to the left. Got your GPS, uh, whichever you have fitted here, I thoroughly recommend the GTN 750 by PMS 50. And um, whilst I remember all the products and references that I make in this video, I'll put a link in the description below, as well as the specs of the PC I'm using. And once I remember, I'll put in my accessories, my peripherals as well. Uh, weather radar here, which I believe is what's located on the right hand wing. And then we have the autopilot selector and we have your standard uh, flying instrumentation. And then behind the yoke, you've got all the lighting uh, cow flaps here. So if you want uh, them open, it's up and light on, down, closed, light off. Uh, you've got the pito and all the other things you'd expect to have, magnetos, altimeter, uh, alternators, sorry, and the fuel pumps. Down lower left, you can see the parking brake and you can see the uh, avionics master switch. And that's really everything you need. 
Now the front I can see my turn point, this is Oxford, from here I'm turning right on to a heading of 339 and that'll take me to my airfield. If I go direct to nearest, nearest airport, oh, it's going to be one of these, there we go, Kidlington. There we go. So let's switch this autopilot off using my HOTAS key. And we'll do a little bit of freehand flying. It feels like you'd expect, it feels like any other single engine aircraft. It flies like a GA aeroplane with a straight wing. It will stall around about 70 knots. It will G-stall if you pull too hard. And when you want to spin it, it'll spin to the right. Unload. Bit of power and recover. The standard flight dynamics, but it's what you come to expect from a GA aeroplane, so I've got no issues with the flight dynamics whatsoever. You can do some aerobatics in it if you wish to, but obviously it's not made to do that. So summary so far, visually it is a stunning little aeroplane, really unique. I love the push prop. Love everything about how it looks. Audibly, I love the noise, I love the buzz, the Hornet noise from the, uh, the twin prop. That's a really nice touch. Most of the uh, audio, I think, is custom by the sounds of it. Uh, System-wise, it's basic Caronado, it's basic general aviation with the option of the GTN 750, so there's plenty in here to keep you occupied, and you've got an autopilot and a weather radar to play with uh, for longer journeys. As for alternatives that you can buy from Marketplace, well, there's not really any other push prop that I know of. So, no, there isn't an alternative to this aeroplane unless you just want to pick another GA aircraft. And finally, obviously, if you haven't already got the hint from what I've been saying so far, do I recommend this aircraft? Absolutely. I had it in P3D and it was great. And now I've got it in Microsoft Flight Sim. It's even better. Yeah, here we are arriving downwind for a left hand turn onto base for runway 19 at Echo Golf Tango Kilo, Oxford, aka Kidlington. This has been a first look kind of review of the uh, brand new Skymaster from Carinado for Microsoft Flight Sim. Thoroughly recommended, great all round aeroplane, very unique, very niche. As a quick aside, whilst I'm flying around near to Kidlington, I'm going to try and switch off the rear engine and see what that does. So I've got full power on the left, full aft throttle on the right. I'm going to select feather with it, I presume that's what that is, mixture to off, and there we go, magneto's off. So we are now single engine. Let's have a look at the RPM. RPM looks like zero on the rear engine. So let's have a look. Oh, that's cool. So properly feathers by the looks of it. And it's static. So now we are single engine. That's pretty neat. Uh, so I've got flap stage two, I believe. So that's two thirds down. I'm positioning downwind at a thousand feet on the clock. And we'll land single engine. It's perfectly happy to, uh, to fly single engine. Of course, you don't have the asymmetry of having twin engines side by side. 
which is quite neat. So it does take a long time to get downwind, so what I'm going to do is select full flap here, bring the power back, I'm going to start my base turn, because I don't need the whole runway for a little airplane like this. And what I'm looking to achieve is around about the speed that I have for the landing flare. Eighty knots, bring it into the flare. That's fun. If you're still with me, then thanks very much for watching. Please chuck in a comment if you've got any questions or a like if you thought it was enjoyable. But until the next time and take care.